Second Thessalonians. Verse 1, chapter 3. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have a free course and be glorified even as it is with you. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. For all men have not faith. But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. God is faithful. Amen. Amen. Paul is writing a letter to the saints in Thessalonica and he is sounding a note of encouragement. There was an attempt here to hinder the word of God and wherever truth is preached there's an effort to hinder it. Amen. Preach a half gospel. Tickle the ears of people. Entertain them with flowery words. The devil doesn't care. But brother, wherever the word of God is going forth in its fullness, that which is capable of delivering men's souls the devil is always there to hinder. Amen. This morning, I talked to the brother out in Washington, and I was trying to prepare him for the opposition, which he would invariably meet. As a brother, you are going to see a manifestation of the devil as you've never seen before. Uh, that when you were doing nothing and just going along with the crowd, everything was all right. But now that you've taken your stand against everything that's not standing for God, yes. amen. amen, now you've disassociated with yourself with everything less than church of God, amen. you're going to recognize the devil doesn't care about you get up talking. He don't care about you reading scripture. But bro, the word of God is not the word of God until it's preached right. Amen. So they were praying. There were those there like they are in Jackson today who are trying to stop the word of God. But they want, you can't stop the word of God anymore. You can stop God. Thank God they sent word out to watch him. He'll be there. You better watch him. But thank God, God broke through that day. I am convinced today that if we are true to God, God will bring through any barrier. The word of God is going to get to where God designed that it should get. And it's not going to return unto him boys. Brother, that's why I'm destined to be faithful to God. You might go to a funeral, drop a few words here. Go to visit your residence, drop a few words there. The word of God under the anointing of God always brings these results. Praise the living God. Listen to what he says here now. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. If people would just think what they are opposing. Listen, the only thing that's capable of delivering a man's soul, he's fighting against it. Isn't that pitiful? People will promote a half gospel. Tell you sin, you must sin, you can't help, do the best you can. They'll promote that. But brother, preach the truth. Let a man know that you can be delivered and kept from sin. Let him know that you can have your very nature changed. Let them know you can have your garments white. And the devil will fight that to no end. Unreasonable men. Unreasonable men. Won't there's no reasoning. You can't reason with them. You can't reason from logic or the word of God. Unreasonable and wicked men. For all men have not faith. 
all religious men have not faith. There's a difference between faith and mentally assenting to something. Or going along with something under the guise of religion. Brother, most people who claim religion have no faith. Amen. And they'll disparage those that do have faith. All right. But the Lord, hallelujah to God, is faithful, hallelujah, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. So now you are going to come in contact and be opposed by all kinds of people. Will you please pray? When you take your stand for God, when you take your stand for holiness, take your stand for healing, amen, trust God for your well-being, you're going to find opposition on every hand. You are. Hallelujah to God. But the Bible says the Lord is faithful. Do you realize the benefits, dear one, of salvation? Do you realize the benefit of this truth that you are enjoying? Don't let the devil call you to back up and feel that you are at a disadvantage because you're trusting God. Brother, if you got faith to trust God for everything, you are the most advantageous individual on earth. Why? Because God is faithful. Everything God promised, He'll perform. Hallelujah. Amen. Why is He faithful? Why? There has not one promise God has ever made fallen to the ground unanswered. Everything they got, they never promised. He brought the plan, and He's capable of doing it. He's able to do it. Thank God he said he can perform it and he will do it for the good. God said you're saved and he will save. God said you're sanctified and he will. God said you're healed and he will heal. Hallelujah to God. He's faithful. He's faithful. God said you keep. God said he'll keep. And I don't care what the devil says. I don't care about your predicament. God keep. God can keep. I don't care about your opposition. I don't care about your problem situation. God can keep. Amen. Listen to what he says. But the Lord is faithful. You've heard me define that word many times. Faithful means that there never has been occasion where it failed. The sun is faithful. Why? It has shown every day since God set it in orbit. The cloud might have skewed sometimes, but it's shining. It's shining. If the sun had refused to shine one day since God set it out there, it would not have been faithful. You understand? If God had failed on one occasion, to fall short of his promise, he wouldn't be faithful. But the word of God, that God is faithful. Don't you know that I know that I'm not taking a long shot when I trust God? Glory to God, Phil. God got a perfect record. And thank God he's not going to mess it up now. Amen. I know God is faithful. Thank God I dare you to trust God. They say you might not come when you call him. Why don't you be there? Oh, you to God. Oh, he's coming. Thank God he's coming. He's coming, glory to God. God is faithful. Thank God God beat deadlines. Praise God they had a court date set. Amen. And they made him put it back when we got there. Praise our God. God is faithful. A God will work it out. And God will perfect that which concerns me. Hallelujah to God. Glory to God. Praise God. The Lord is faithful. Oh, glory to God. God is faithful. Who will establish you. David said, he set me up. Upon a rock, Lord, to God. I mean, that your feet shall not be moved. God will establish you. Now, I don't care how much, you might be up and down every day. You might be in and out. You don't have to be. You can take a stand. 
you can jump out on God yes. and hang there. Yes. You understand me? Now you say, I can't keep my place. Say what you want to say. God says, yes. God can establish you. Yes. You can open your mouth, praise our God, and you don't have to take it back. Yes. Amen. God can establish you. You might have been stumbling around ever since you got saved, but God can establish you. You might have backed up of everything you ever said, but God can establish you. And I know He can. And thank God we got some examples of that. Amen. I thank God that God has some people that the devil is not going to run off of nothing. The devil is not going to back them up off of one thing. Amen. You understand? He can huff and puff all he please. God got some people that the devil is not going to back up off of one thing. Not one thing they've ever bowed. Not every one thing they've ever set their foot on, the devil not going to take one inch of ground from them. Not one inch from them. I thank God for establishing grace. You can puny around, praise our God, and, and, and vacillate around until you die if you want to. God can establish you. God can put you there, praise our God, you'll be like the rock of Gibraltar. God can do it. And he will do it. He has done it. And he is doing it. And he shall do it. Praise our God. Praise God. Amen. That word establish means to set up on a permanent basis. Glory to God. God can set you up not on a two-week basis. Not on a three-week or a month basis. God can set you up on a permanent basis. So when I come back off my trip, I don't have to ask you, you still got your victory? You still holding it like you had it when I left? God just set you up on a permanent basis. Praise God, we come back a thousand years from now. Thank God you still have it with an increase. Praise the living God. Amen. Let me see what he says now. He who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Keep you from hurt. Keep you from wrong. Isn't it sad that false religion today tells people that you've got to do evil sometimes. The best you can do is sin more or less every day. Listen, they ascribe more power to the devil than to God. They say the devil can make you sin, but God can't keep you from sinning. The devil got so much power, he can pull you into evil, but God can't keep you out of evil. The word of God says God is able to keep you from evil. Not only is he able, but he does keep you from evil. Praise our God. God's people are not an evil people. Amen. So don't call one of the evil. Praise God. Amen. Despite others. Despite others. You notice what he says here in the preceding verse? Delivered us from unreasonable and wicked men. Letting you know, thank God, I don't care how wicked somebody is. I don't care if you live with somebody wicked. I don't care if the people in the next apartment are wicked. I don't care if your boss is wicked. God can keep you from evil. Whether or not you're kept is not dependent on how wicked somebody else might be. So don't say he made me do it. Amen. God's able to keep you. Praise our God. Amen. Keep you from evil. The definition for the word evil, sin, and depravity. In Jude, verse 24, now unto him, hallelujah, that is able to keep you from falling. Dear ones, that's why falling is so serious. Why? Because you could have been kept from it. That's why it's so hard. That's why the consequences are so great. That's why the reaping is so plenteous. Why? Because you didn't have to fall. Amen. Nobody will be able to rise up in the judgment and tell God, I couldn't help it. Uh -huh. That's right. Amen, Nobody will be able to say, my difficulty was as such. I had so many problems. So many things were piling up on me that I just couldn't help it. Amen. She kept on waving in my face and kept on in my face and kept on pushing me and I just flopped. Come on now. Come on. God is able to keep you from my falling. Amen. 
You might have to be around temptation off. You might be often rubbed in the wrong way. But thank God, God is able. Not only is he able, but he will. Not only is he willing, but he is. Keeping his people, thank God, from falling. You don't have to fall, ever. The Bible says in him. There is no variableness. A shadow of turning goes to God. Let me tell you, dear one, you don't have to even look toward the cliff. Amen. You don't even have to stumble. Hallelujah to God. Wait a minute. Let me see what they say. Go to God. Amen. Now unto him. Hallelujah to God. Listen. Not you. You might say, but I'm not strong, Brother Hampton. I've been a weakling all my life. But the Bible says, now unto him. Thank God he's not depending on you. He's not depending on me to keep myself. Amen. Amen. But now unto him. Amen. Hallelujah. Who is able to keep you from falling. And wait a minute. And present you faultless. Hallelujah to God. Present you as a stumble. Go to God. And present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Hallelujah to God. Oh, God is able. Praise the living God. And he's faithful. Thank God he's able to keep you from falling. If you fall, you fall by choice. You get that in mind. Do you want to look? The most severe test, trial, or temptation that I've ever gone through. I don't care how much the devil harassed my mind or how hard he pushed me. I can always remember I had a choice. That's right. Amen. That's right. There is one thing the devil cannot touch, and that is your choice. Amen. That is God-like. God gave us that. Amen. You understand? God gave us that. He might persuade you or, or might do something, uh, infatuate you in some fashion and make you choose, but the devil cannot affect your choice. If you never say yes to the devil, you'll never sin. Amen. And everybody that does sin says yes to the devil. Amen. 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 So all these preachers and things that I'm sinning and everybody's sinning, then they're saying yes to the devil. They know what they're doing too. They know what they're doing. If you fall, you fall because you choose to. Because there's something at that moment you prefer more than the love of God. There's something you want to please more than God at that moment. So if you do it by choice, then your consequences are meet, whatever they might be. You should have no argument, praise our God. I'm so glad that God left it that way. Amen. So I'll know that I don't have to sin. Why? God leave that up to me whether to say yes or no to the devil. That's always mine. That cannot be taken away from me. Praise our God. Say God is able to keep you. Open the 121st Psalm. Praise our God. Verse 1. They often read the scripture, but they don't go far enough with it. I lift up mine eyes. Hallelujah to God. Unto the hills from whence cometh my help. I think God wants to make us aware of the source of our help. Praise God. My help cometh from the Lord. Hallelujah to God. Which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. God won't suffer your foot to be moved. Listen, not only does he leave the choice to you, but if you will trust God and let God know you want to be kept, he won't suffer your foot to be moved. Glory to God, brother. Hallelujah. You, let me see. He, hallelujah to God. Glory to God. You got to go a long way to backslide. Amen. He might have a, a host of demons pulling your foot. God said, you leave it foot alone. Amen. God said, that boy don't want to sin. He want to serve me. You quit putting him. Amen. And you leave his foot right where it is. On the rock. Amen. What's the God do? Hallelujah. Go. Hallelujah. The Bible says, if you want to live right, and you decide, I don't want to do no evil, God going to let you do it. My God, help! Wait a minute, look, look. You don't choose it, and God won't let him do it. 
Brother, you ain't gonna mess with him no more. You ain't gonna do it. Leave it for the law. That boy wanna stand. That boy renounced that mess. Leave it for the law. And let him do. Praise our God. Amen. I believe we can make it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let God know I want to make it, Lord. Cry. Pray. Beg God. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes, Lord. Keep me. Lord, hold me fast. Praise the Lord God. God, if you want to stay saved that much, I won't let the devil be. I'll hold him back. Praise the Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Praise our God. He will not suffer. Now you take it out of your hand. Now you talk about him. Glory. Now if you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. Get it, Doug. Get this. If you don't want it back now, you don't have to do it. But if you get on down the bed with God, God will join up and say that he won't let you do it. Hallelujah to God. Praise our God. God is beside your desire. So the devil can't make you backslide with just your choice. Get, by yourself you can stay saved. Just by your choosing. But if you get on down the business, I won't let you. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God said, now listen, you don't have to fuss. You don't have to fuss. But if you get on down and humble you up and pray, I won't let you fuss. My God. Oh, God. Look, you can by your own choice refuse to lust. But if you turn that head and just keep on turning anyway, I'll hold your head around. Don't the God no more. Hallelujah to God. And you can decide, I'm not going to look. I will help you. I'll, I'll, I'll hold your neck right there. But if you insist, if you insist that I don't want to do it, I just won't do it. I won't cut my eyes. I'll hold you. God will help you out. If you prove you want to go, if you insist I'm going to go anyway, God will help you out. See, they want all of this stumbling and falling and rolling on the ground. That's not God. That's not God. That's not God's will. You've gone a long way before you can do that. You still have to meditate two or three days on the backslide, all that food. Praise the living God. He will not suffer that foot to be moved. He glory to God. He that keepeth thee. Hallelujah. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Hallelujah. Two o'clock in the morning. Three, four, five. Thank God you're not slumber. Don't have no office hours. Don't have to wake him up and say, Help. Glory to God. Behold. He that keepeth Israel will neither sleep nor slumber. Praise the living God. He's not going to do either. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade. Upon the right hand, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. Hallelujah. He shall preserve thy soul. Oh, glory to God forevermore. That's enough for me. I don't have to be afraid. I would rather walk praying our God with trembling knees. Glory to God forevermore. Hallelujah. God keeps. Amen. On his terms. In St. John. Chapter 17. Amen. God keeps on his own terms. Verse 11, and now 
I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name. There's your keeping. Get the word of God. Keep through thine own name, Father, God, saints of God, church of God. Keep through thine, not John the Baptist's name, not John Wesley's name, not Martin Luther's name, not the Pope's name, but keep through thine own name. God said, I keep you. But I'm going to keep you through my name, church of God, saints of God. I'm going to keep through my own name. You said the name doesn't make any difference, but God said it does make a difference. Jesus said it does make a difference. You said the name makes no difference, but Jesus said the name does make a difference. Keep through thine own name. That's the only name whereby he promised to keep us through. Praise our God. Amen. Not some bishop's name. Not the presiding elder's name. Thank God, but keep through thine own name. What's your name? God. Church of God. Saints of God. Keep through thine own name, the word of God says. Praise the living God. God keeps you under his terms. God keeps you on his conditions. Bless the Lord. Thank God. Let's see what it said to Jacob over in, over in our Genesis chapter 28. Praise the living God. Thank the Lord. Chapter 28, verse 14. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, and in thee, and in thy seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And be glory to God forevermore. Listen to what he says. Let me show you something, saints of God. Jacob had toiled with God wrestled with God and got God's favor do what I have I think I preached to you not long ago the benefits of God's favor do you want to you realize if you do that special thing with God if you get that special kind of relationship with God God will award you his special favor God. look People are living so skippy, afraid they might do too much for God, afraid they might make too great a sacrifice. But you are defeating your own purpose. Don't you know, dear one, the further you go with God, the more you convince God I'm ready to get on out on you, you get God's favor. Jacob wrestled with God all night long and prevailed with God and got God's favor. He got more than the ordinary blessing. Too many people are satisfied with just the ordinary. Listen, what he told Jacob. Behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places. Hallelujah to God. Everywhere you go, I will be your divine protector. I'll go to God. Every place that you find it divinely necessary to go, I'll keep you. Dear one, I know that's I know that's true. I know that's true. Brother, when I was in, the, in military service, I wasn't there by choice, but God kept me. I've never been in a place or a predicament, praise our God, where God didn't keep. Why going by God's orders, God will keep you wherever you go. See, that's why you need the favor of God. That's why you don't need to live mediocre life. You don't have to deep water. Make sacrifices for God. Renew your commitment to God. Praise God. I'll keep thee in all places whither thou goest. And will bring thee again. Glory to God. I wish you would get this. Bring thee again into this land. Now look. If God say I'll keep you where you go and bring you back, can't nobody stop you. If God steps out and make an announcement, nobody can bring it to naught. Can you see what I'm talking about? God, look, I'm going to let you wander around. Go here and there. Listen, listen. I'm going to keep you wherever you go. I'm going to be with you. I'll make sure no evil befalls you. I'll make sure nothing evil overcomes you. And not only that, but I'm going to take you all around and I'm going to bring you back home. 
And when God say, I'll take you and bring you back, you come back saved. Amen. You come back with an increase. Amen. I don't care what kind of trap the devil might have set for you. Yeah. Thank God when God with you, when God say, I'll bring you back, he'll bring you back, brother. Amen. You're not going to leave you stranded, praise our God. You leave in grace and come back in disgrace. It won't be that way. Amen. Praise the living God river. I thank God that you notice, dear one, in some instances in the Bible, when people got God's favor, he made future prognosis. He, he told them what's going to happen. Isn't that something? They got such faith with God that he didn't deal with them in the ordinary fashion. He said, I'm going to take you back. I'm going to be with you all while you're going, everywhere you go. So the way in the future was going to happen to you. Why? He saw that that man had got an experience. He was so set to please God that I can tell you what he's going to do in the future. You're not going back flat. You're not going down the back flat. I'm going to bring you back home. Praise God. Praise God. But what about this person in charge? I don't care about that. He's coming back home. Please. Praise our God. Amen. You can, you can settle this thing so with God. Like he told Abraham, listen. The way you got this thing settled, boy, I can tell you what's going to happen to you already. You're going to sleep with your father. If you're going to make it. I don't have to wait until you die to tell. You're going you to make it. I see it. I can look down inside you and, and see the way your heart fixed. The way you got to fix up. You're going to make it. But what about the temptation, Lord? And what about the hard places? What about people who come against him? I don't care. He's going to make it. I see, I see this man got this thing so settled. He's going to do my will regardless. That man going to make it. I'm going to tell you right now. I can't be living a thousand years. He's going to make it. He's secure. Thank God he is, his choice is unalterable. The devil can't alter his choice. Praise the living God. Don't you want to get back there? So God can tell you beforehand, amen, that that person has it several to a degree, that thank God I can tell you right now, he's not going to falter. He's not going to back up. Take him to the chopping block if you want to. Expect him, dismember him if you please. Thank God he's going to stand. Do what you please. Walk off and leave him. Forsake him. Amen. Back up on him. Thank God that he's going to stand. Praise the living God. Let me see now what verse will be. I will be. I will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken. To the off. And thank God if I don't leave you, ain't nobody else on me. Don't you worry about that. Listen, I've told you what I'm going to do. And I'm going to be right there, hallelujah, to see that it's carried out. Lord, have mercy. What that song you sing, sister? A great camp of angels, band of angels? I wish y'all would interpret what you sing sometimes. See what God said? Listen, he said, I, I'm going to be right beside you. The go to God. God said, if I let you go by yourself, the devil might try to make me eat up my word. So I told you I'm going to do it, so I'm, I'm going to be right here. Everywhere you go, I'm going to be ready with you. Hallelujah to God. I'm going to see that you come back home. God will just turn you off, pray way out there by yourself, and amen, and let the devil get between you and him. If God said, I'm going to bring you back home, he'll be right there. Thank God every move you make, he'll be right there. Every time the devil reaches you to get, praise our God. Get back, get up on me. I'll be right there, praise our God. Yes, he will do. He said, look, he said, I told you what I'm going to do. And until that's finished, I'm not going to get an itch from you. And when you go to sleep, thank God I'll be right there. When you wake up, I'll be ready to go to sleep. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the living God. I'm not going to get one itch from you until I have done all that I said. I'm going to make sure my word don't fail. Because God will protect his own word. God will protect his own word. Praise God. He'll stay right there and make sure it comes to pass. Praise the living God, which I have spoken. Bear up. Glory to God. Philippians chapter 4. Glory to Christ forevermore. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to God. If God gave you a promise, dear one, have you lived close enough to God to get a promise? Have you lived consistent enough for God to make a pronouncement? Praise our God. Amen. I mean, get on up close to it. Let him tell you something. And if he tell you, you can't take it back. Praise the Lord God. If he's there, we'll keep you. You've got to do it. If he's there, we'll bring it back. He's got to bring you back. Whatever it takes to bring you back. Thank God. If he's there, we'll do it for you. He'll have to do it. Go. And he's 
Praise God. If God opens his mouth, he won't take it back. That's why see, God swears in his wrath and he swears in his punishment. Now, if you ever make God swear in his wrath, he's not going to take that back either. The Bible says God swore in his wrath. They, 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 they worked him up. Amen. They was like kept on fooling around. He said, you're not going. He swore in his wrath. They, make it, they made him swear in his wrath. See, but now sometimes he swears in his pleasure. You please him so much. Until God just make a, make, make an outlandish promise. I'm going to give you everything you ask for. My God. Well, Lord God, you say you have a big promise, Lord. Well, I, I said it so you can have everything. Just, just ask for it. Just start grabbing it. God! You mess around and please me so much. Amen. You, you work yourself so much in my favor. Now, amen, I'm going to give you just, just you ask for it. You tell what you want. Get how much of it you need. You gotta swear in his pleasure. Just tell me. I mean, write it on the paper. You think you go forget it? Write it down. And then I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. I have to back it up because I told you I do. Anything you ask according to my will, I do. Anything he brings up according to Amen. So it's a God. You gotta swear in his pleasure, and he won't take it back. Praise our God. Philippians chapter four, verse six. Be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. The peace of God. Dear one, that's what keeps us from sinning. That's what keeps us strong. That's what keeps us valued for the call of God, the peace of God. Amen. Keep your mind. Praise our God. Keep your very soul. But people whose lives are so uncertain, so unstable, they are always semi-condemned. They don't know where they are. Have no peace. They're like they're like the trouble sea. Who when it is trouble cast up dirt and mire. Amen. The one but the peace of God can keep you. Amen. That's what took those brothers to the stake to be burned, the peace of God. Amen. That's what kept them prayed up with their, with their anointing all the time. They had the peace of God and they would let the devil upset it. That's the keeper. People don't know the secret of being kept. The peace of God. That's why the devil always tries to upset you and disrupt you and, and cause you to be turbulent in your experience. Why? Disrupt your peace. Always keep you going here and there and upset about this and something always on your mind and something bothering you always. The peace of God. There is no treasure that is greater than the peace of God. People are paying millions of dollars and going here and there trying to find peace, brother, but you won't find it there. The peace of God. Amen. Which passes all understanding. You can't explain it. You can't even understand it. Praise I'll get that to ask God for more. Shall keep your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. God is faithful. God is faithful. Now, if you've been unfaithful, let me read one more scripture if I can. Over in uh, 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 11. Read that for me. 2 Timothy 2, 11. Read that for me. It is a faithful saying. It is a faithful saying. So if we be dead with him. If we, listen, be dead with him. You've got to be dead with him. Come on. We shall also live with him. We shall also live with him. Most people haven't died with him. We shall also live with him. Come on. If we suffer. If we suffer. We shall also reign with him. We shall also reign with him. If we deny him. If we deny him. He also will deny us. He will also deny us. Read. If we believe not, if we believe not, yet he abides faithful, he, faithful, he cannot deny himself. He cannot deny himself. Regardless of what you do or, or refuse to do, God remains faithful. That's why God delights so much in his people that are faithful. God wants somebody he can depend on. Somebody will make a decision and, and, and hold it. Somebody I don't have to worry about what they're going to do next month or next week. They might jump out of the bag. Amen. God wants somebody that's faithful. And God is able to keep us faithful. Praise the living God forevermore. 
If you line up this morning, if you humble your heart this morning, amen, God will grant you the help that you need this morning. Amen. If you're not saved, God will save you. If you're, if you're not established, God will establish you this morning so that you want to be in and out, up and down. Some of us cannot keep a good experience more than two or three weeks at a time, but God can establish it, and he will do it. He will do it. And dear one, I'm going to tell you something. That's when the peace comes. When you know that the next storm is not going to blow you away. Amen. You can have to know if the devil comes this way, you don't have to tremble when they say, I, I, you know, you better behave. I, you know what I'll do to you. If you fool me, I, I'll hit you along that line. You better, you better cool down. You can't have no peace when the devil, the devil is threatening you and, and you're afraid that he might do it. And if he does it, I don't know how I'm coming out. Now, if you desire help this morning, if you recognize your need help this morning, Instead of getting disgusted with yourself, just come on down and, and get down and be with God and let God establish you, let God save you, let God deliver you, whatever your need might be. Shall we say, whatever your need might be, whatever your need might be, God's got it. And do one while it's available, while you see a need of it, that's the time to put in for it. He's able to do it. God's able to do it. It's not his inability or his unwillingness. It's the fact that people won't submit. Amen. People won't admit that need. God able to establish it. Amen. You won't constantly be saying it and unable to perform it. God is able to establish your heart. Amen. Don't care about wicked and evil men. God is able to establish your heart. You desire help of God. You desire salvation this morning. You desire deliverance this morning. Do you desire to be established this morning? God is able to do it. God is able to perform it, they want. May God help us. Amen. Many people are stepping off the stage in the long eternity. I remember just last Sunday, or, or Sunday before last it was, as I was leaving, a lady asked me to pray for a young man, I guess in his 20s. And, uh, well, I didn't have a chance. I left. I heard this morning the young man is going off a deep eternity. You could walk by my house, live a crooked door after me. Walk by my house almost every day. Go on out to meet God. May God have mercy to do one. People are running here and there, doing this, that, and the other. Amen. And you don't know what, what God's going to call you. God might interrupt your plan. You don't know. They want it's time to get right with God. It's time to get right with God. Why don't we come? They want those of us who are up and down, in and out, and don't know where we are going in. Amen. Can't keep a level experience. What do you let God establish in this morning? And if you don't do it, you will, it's, it's just a matter of time. While we sing, will you come? Let's pray. Why don't you come? Number 412. If you want to be helped of God, we're not asking you to join no church. We're not, we're not talking about joining no church. Oh, we want you to get help of God. We're not asking you to join anything. Uh, we want you to, God got help for you. And all we want you to do is get help. God got it for you. If you say pray for me, we'll pray for you. Whatever your need might be. You can come to the altar or you can go to the prayer room. Whichever you prefer. And we'll come and we'll talk with you. We'll deal with you. We'll pray for you. As we sing, if you want help, why don't you come and kneel at the altar or you may go to the prayer room. Whichever you prefer. As we sing. All right. Amen. Yes, he will. Praise God. Our altar workers, please. Give another verse. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. God's able to deliver you this morning. God's able to lift you out of it, dear ones. You know, dear one, off in eternity, no doubt that young man might be thinking at the time he saw us going to our car with my Bible on him, um, getting ready to go to church and how he passed by. And no doubt God moved on his heart and said, that's what you should be doing. He might have gone home convicted many a night 
when you saw the saints of God, saw us gathering around, saw the saints walking down the street, going to church, carrying in their Bible. And no doubt he looked at many times and thought that's what I should be doing. But now it's too late. Brother, to look back over life after you wake up in eternity and say that's what I should have done. Even this service, they want, whether you think so or not, you might feel that it's coincidental that you're here. But they want you to be able to see this very service in eternity. And think how you could have gotten your life clear. How you could have knelt at the altar. How you could have gone to the prayer room and prayed through and got peace. Got that very peace in your soul. And no doubt some of you who are unstable will see how you could have gotten stabilized this morning. All of those doubts and fears that you are entertaining from day to day. All of this trembling in your spiritual knees as it were. You will realize how I, that morning I could have got something in my soul that would have kept me going, that would have solidified me, but for whatever reason you refused it. While we sing another verse, why don't you take courage, you want, and let us pray. Let us pray. Why don't you come? Oh, we will just pray for you, whatever you want. We, we're not going to press you into anything. We don't intend to put no pressure on you, but this is a privilege, and we would like you to take advantage of it.